sexual harassment is illegal and not tolerated in Delaware workplaces. Employees in Delaware are protected by both state and federal law. The Delaware Discrimination Employment Act protects every employee in the state from sexual harassment, regardless of the size of their employer, and Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 protects workers in organizations with 15 or more employees from sexual harassment, defined as sex discrimination. Delaware law requires all employers in the state with 50 or more workers to provide sexual harassment training to all employees every two years. The state of Delaware has a long history of protecting the rights of every employee, and every employer in the state is required to have a zero tolerance policy toward sexual harassment. This means that every complaint or known instance of sexual harassment will be taken seriously and investigated, and when warranted, perpetrators will face disciplinary action up to and including termination. There are two types of sexual harassment, quid pro quo and hostile environment. Quid pro quo occurs when a manager or supervisor withholds or awards job benefits on the basis of sexual favors. This includes work assignments, hiring, termination, promotions or demotions, positive or negative performance reviews, or any other job-related benefit. Enduring harassment as a condition of employment is another form of quid pro quo harassment. This type of harassment is often seen in office romances. Consensual sexual conduct is not illegal. However, no employee should be made to feel that engaging in a relationship is necessary to remain employed. Even if this was not the manager's intention, it's the perception of the employee that is most important to the courts. Enduring sexual harassment as a condition of employment even occurs when the manager is not the harasser. For instance, it's unlawful for a restaurant supervisor to tell employees to put up with lewd comments and inappropriate touching because it's part of the job of being a server. Just one incidence of quid pro quo harassment is illegal. Hostile environment harassment occurs when a pattern of sexual conduct has the purpose or effect of substantially interfering with an individual's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive working environment. Sexual harassment does not need to be sexual in nature. A pattern of harassment, discrimination, or bias based on gender, gender identity, transgender status, and gender dysphoria are covered under sex discrimination, regardless of whether the harassment was sexual in nature. Delaware specifically prohibits discrimination on the basis of marital status, sexual orientation, and gender identity or expression. Additionally, employees are protected against harassment or discrimination based on pregnancy, childbirth, or medical conditions related to pregnancy or childbirth. Hostile environment sexual harassment can occur between employees of the same sex, between employees of different sexes, and between employees of any rank or position in an organization. Harassing jokes, comments, or other behavior can create a hostile work environment even if they aren't directly targeted at the individual making the harassment complaint. Delaware law specifically provides protections to unpaid interns, job applicants, joint employees, and apprentices. Additionally, harassment can be perpetrated by third-party employees like vendors, facility security workers, visitors, and even customers. Sexual harassment can occur anywhere that employees represent their organizations, including work parties, dinner with clients, conferences, trade shows, sales calls, and charity events. The courts use the reasonable person standard when determining if offensive conduct is illegal. In other words, would a reasonable person find the behavior severe enough to substantially interfere with an individual's work performance or create an intimidating, hostile, or offensive working environment? The fact is that most sexual behaviors, when they are continuous and unwanted, or particularly severe, meet this standard. The safe way to avoid sexual harassment is to avoid these behaviors entirely. The following acts are illegal, potentially illegal, or have been listed as part of successful litigation in Delaware. Rape, sexual battery, molestation, or attempts to commit these assaults threats, intimidation, or physically blocking a person's movement or ability to work, vandalism of personal or professional property, or other sabotage of an individual's work or ability to do his or her job effectively, intentional or unintentional physical conduct, which is sexual in nature, such as touching, pinching, patting, grabbing, or either brushing against or poking another employee's body. 
requests for sexual favors accompanied by implied or overt threats concerning the victim's performance evaluation, a promotion, or other job benefits. Subtle or obvious pressure to engage in unwelcome sexual activities, unwanted flirting, or repeated requests for dates. Sexually oriented gestures, noises, remarks, jokes, or comments about a person's physical attributes, sexuality, or sexual experience, which are sufficiently severe or pervasive to create a hostile work environment. Yelling, name calling, and bullying. Long stares and sexually suggestive looks. Gossiping or spreading rumors about sexual topics or engaging in sexual conversations that are overheard by others. Displaying or posting pictures, posters, calendars, graffiti, objects, promotional material, reading materials, or other materials that are sexually demeaning or pornographic. Sending sexually explicit texts, emails, or instant messages. Viewing sexually based websites and the use of social networking sites for sexually based messages, pictures, or videos. The use of demeaning or offensive names such as honey, sweetie, hottie, baby, girl, boy, or hunk. Offensive gender-based comments or behaviors that demean people simply because of their gender, such as a woman's place is in the kitchen, not the boardroom. Stereotyping people because they don't conform to a gender stereotype or because they work in a job that has been traditionally held by another gender. Incidents of quid pro quo harassment and severely inappropriate actions, such as the touching of an intimate body part, threats, or intimidation, must be reported immediately. For less serious conduct, it is helpful, but not required, to let harassers know that you are offended by their conduct and want it to stop. However, employees should report incidents of inappropriate behavior as soon as they occur. All sexual harassment complaints will receive a prompt and thorough investigation perpetrator or perpetrators will be told to stop immediately. When a manager or supervisor has knowledge of sexual harassment, it is considered to be the knowledge of the employer as well. Employees who continue inappropriate conduct after being told to stop are subject to increasingly serious forms of discipline, up to and including termination. If a complaint is ignored, employees are encouraged to report the harassment to another person in the organization, as outlined in the sexual harassment policy. Managers and supervisors who fail to report a complaint or knowledge of sexual harassment will be subject to disciplinary action up to and including termination. Every employee involved in a harassment complaint must be given as much confidentiality as possible. However, warn them that in the process of an investigation, some information will be revealed to others involved with the case. Although some information must be divulged in the process of investigating complaints, confidentiality is guaranteed to the greatest extent possible. If it's determined that harassment occurred, prompt and effective corrective action must be taken. Remedies for the victim may include reinstatement, wages for unpaid time off, or restoration of sick leave and vacation time. If job benefits were lost because of the harassment, they should be awarded. For example, if a victim was passed over for a promotion due to harassment, an appropriate remedy would be receiving the promotion and back pay equivalent to what would have been earned in the new position. In many cases, employers must make changes to policies and procedures to ensure that the harassment does not reoccur. In addition to filing a complaint with their employer, employees have the right to file a complaint with the Delaware Department of Labor Office of Anti-Discrimination or the US EEOC within 300 days of the harassment. A complaint must be filed with the EEOC before filing a lawsuit in federal court. Sexual harassment involving the physical touching of an intimate body part, coerced physical confinement, and or sex acts may be a crime and the local police department should be contacted. It's illegal to retaliate against employees for making or participating in a harassment complaint. The following legal activities are protected by Delaware and federal law. Filing a formal written complaint of sexual harassment, either internally with management or human resources, or with any anti-discrimination agency. Testifying or assisting in a proceeding involving sexual harassment, either in a court of law or before the Division of Human Rights. Opposing sexual harassment by making a verbal or informal complaint to management, 
or by simply informing a supervisor or manager of harassment. Complaining that another employee has been sexually harassed or encouraging a fellow employee to report harassment. Opposing discrimination in any manner. In Delaware, it is illegal to subject an employee to a negative employment action for filing or participating in a harassment complaint. A negative employment action is defined as any action taken by a supervisor that negatively impacts the employment status of an employee. These retaliatory actions do not need to be job-related or even occur in the workplace. Unlawful retaliation can be any action more than trivial that would have the effect of dissuading a reasonable worker from making or supporting a charge of harassment or any other practices forbidden by the law. Retaliation can even occur after the individual is no longer employed by the organization. For instance, giving an unwarranted negative job reference for a former employee. Adverse employment actions are not automatically retaliatory. Employees are still subject to regular disciplinary rules and job requirements and must substantiate retaliation claims. If, after an investigation, complaints are found to be without merit, participants are still protected from discipline or punishment if they had a good faith belief that harassment or retaliation occurred. However, the retaliation provision is not intended to protect persons making intentionally false charges of harassment. Warn all employees involved in the case that retaliation is illegal and will not be tolerated. Both harassment and retaliation can result in disciplinary actions, including written warnings, suspension, demotion, and termination. Sexual harassment often affects future career advancement and may even hamper the ability to be hired by another organization. The loss of personal reputation and trust with coworkers, friends, and family can be devastating and life-altering. What can you do to prevent sexual harassment? It's simple. Leave sexually-based behaviors at the door. Treat everyone with respect. Speak up when you witness harassment. Every employee deserves a safe, comfortable environment at work, a workplace free of harassment and fear, and full of respect. It's up to everyone to do their part in preventing harassment.